Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is John Hart, and today I want to talk about the new Stream Deck Mobile 2.0. So first of all, let's have a look to what is new on this update. There is a lot of updates on this version, but for me, there are four that are more relevant. The first one is that now with this new version, Stream Deck Mobile can be free for everyone, but there are some limits on this version. The most important one is that you can only use six buttons, but it doesn't mean that you only have six functions, as you still have access to folders, pages, etc. The next big update is that finally Stream Deck Mobile is an iPad native which means that now the app is fully optimized for iPads. You can have a fully advantage of the larger screen of an iPad. You can also use the multitasking support, also the split view, and you can have up to 128 kits at once. The next big update is that with the prop version, you can customize all of these virtual device, which means no more free gaps on your profiles. So if you need on a specific device only 15 keys, then you can add only 15. If you need more, you can add more. It's fully customizable. The depending on your needs. And the last big update is that you can have unlimited virtual devices, which means that on the iPhone or on the iPad, you can simply slice the screen and have multiple profiles running at the same time. Okay, now let's talk about pricing. So basically, we have four different ways of using this app. The first one, as mentioned before, running the free version. But if it's not enough for you and you want to upgrade to Stream Deck Mobile Pro, you have three different payment methods. Now, the price might be different depending on your country. So I'm going to explain you the price in dollars. The first one is a monthly payment for $299. The second option is a yearly payment for $24.99. And the third option is a lifetime license for $49.99. So now let's talk about the advantage of upgrading to a Pro. With the Pro version, you can customize the faceplate. You can also expand your key capacity up to 128 keys. You can also customize your keypad layout and also customize your wallpapers for keys. In my opinion, the most important one is the ability to add all of the keys that you need. And now that we cover what is new, let's have a closer look to the new Stream Deck mobile app. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is to download the Stream Deck app into our iPad or iPhone. We have the app downloaded, we have to open it. And the next step is to go to the Stream Deck software. Now here on the Stream Deck software, as you can see, this is my main profile for Stream Deck MK2. In order to add the Stream Deck app, we have to click here on the main profile and add mobile device and just follow this instruction. Okay, now here on my iPad, let me open the Stream Deck app. And now the first thing that we have to do is to connect to our device. As you can see, it's already connected. Now, the next thing, we have to add a virtual device. As you can see also, I already have my own screen, but I'm going to create another for this example. So I'm click on add virtual device and now I can configure as I want. I'm going to put for this name demo. OK, then you can also modify the layout. You can choose between mini, classic, XL or even customize as you want. I'm going to create a custom layout 8x8. Go back. You can change the orientation, set it on dynamic, fixed or non-orientation. Let me go back. Now you can also change the appearance. You can set it on system, dark or light. I'm going to leave it on system. And now you can also change the face plate. You can choose between all of these options and you can also add your own. For this example, I'm going to use the first face plate. Now we have everything ready. I'm going to press connect. Next, you are going to have on your computer a pop-up window where the Stream Deck software is going to ask you if you want to copy the profiles from another Stream Deck. So you can choose don't copy or copy. In this case, I'm not going to copy anything. Okay, and now I can see that is already connected. Now, if I want to split the view, I just have to press to these three dots on the top and then I can add a new window. I can choose one of my virtual device or I can create another. So I'm going to create another virtual device. I'm going to call it Demo 2. For this new device, the layout I want it as it is. Orientation dynamic, the appearance on system and the faceplate same as before. So I'm going to press connect. It's going to appear on your computer the same pop-up window from Stream Deck software if you want to copy the profiles from another device. I'm not going to copy anything. And now here I have it. So now if I press to these three dots on top, I can choose between these three options. The one on the left is to use it as a single view. The one on the middle 
is to split the view. So now with this one select, I can open another Stream Deck. And as you can see here, I have my two different virtual devices. So this is how it look, the split view. You can also resize a little bit depending on your taste or on your needs. So let's go to the Stream Deck software and set up all of these virtual devices. Okay, so here on the Stream Deck software, as you can see, this is my main profile for my Stream Deck MK2. But now in order to edit our virtual device, we have to click here on this little arrow next to the name of the profile. And as you can see here, I have the three different virtual profiles that I create for this demo. Demo one, two, and three. You just have to click one of them and start editing as you want. The plugins that I need to make Stream Deck work with FL Studio are the MIDI and MIDI Battery. If you want to learn how to use a Stream Deck with FL Studio, I made a video about it, so I'm going to leave the link of the video on the description below. Now let me show you my three different profiles for the Stream Deck mobile. The first one is a profile that I call Mute, where I have all of my Mute and Solo tools. I have a Mute Solo tools for my kick drum, clap and snare, percussion, cymbals, bass, chords, arpeggios, synths and effects. These three on the middle top are to solo my main groups. This one is to solo only the drums, this one solo the drums and the bass, and this one solo the music. And this one on the right side just enable or disable my master chain, and these two calls Sequential Rev2 and Sequential Pro3 enables or disables my hardware synths on FL Studio. The next profile is an effects window where I have all of my favorite effects from a single click. And the last profile is similar than the effects, but in this case with instruments. So now let's go back to the iPad and let me show you how we set up all of these windows. So first of all, I like to use my iPad, which is always right in front of me, with an application called Process Audio Decibel, which is an incredible analyzer. So here on my applications, I create a shortcut, which basically opens Process Audio Decibel screen and also open the Stream Deck app. So let me press the button. And here I have everything ready. Now the only downside that I can see for the Stream Deck app is that every time that I open the application, I have to set up all of my windows. So now let me show you how I do it. I press these three buttons on top and I'm going to add another window. In this case, the instruments. And now I'm going to press again to the three buttons on top and I'm going to choose single window. Now, if I slice these windows with my four fingers on the iPad, I can go back to my decibel application and I can also bring back the slice window. So now I'm going to press again the three dots on top and I'm going to create another window. In this case, it's going to be the effects. Again, I'm going to press the three dots on top and I'm going to select single view. Now, again, I can come back to my decibel application and I'm going to bring back my slice view. And now I'm going to press the settings. I'm going to go to manage connection and I'm going to choose my mute device. So here I have it. And that's the way how we set up the decibel application together with the Stream Deck app. So on this slide window, I like to have my mute and solo tool. So when I need it, I just have to show up the window. And if I don't need to use it, I can just hide it. So now if I need to open an effects or an instrument, I just have to slice the screen of the iPad with my four fingers. In this screen, I have my favorite effects available from a single click. And in these windows, I have all of my favorite instruments, again, available from a single click. Okay, and the last thing that I want to show you on this tutorial is an update that I did on the physical Stream Deck MK2 that I have. If you ever watched my previous tutorial, you know that the Mute instrument and FX profiles, I had it before on the physical Stream Deck MK2. But now, thanks to this update on Stream Deck Mobile, I can finally move these tools into the iPad, which means that now I have a 7 free keys on the Stream Deck MK2. So let me show you what I add to these seven keys. Here on the Stream Deck software, as you can see now, I'm on the profile of the FL Studio. And the new keys that I add are these four on the middle and also these three on the middle top. So these two in here are basically an undo and redo buttons. This one on the middle zooms all the way out my project on FL Studio. The one on the top zooms depending of my selection. And this one on the left add an space, 
again depending on my selection. And these two in here, in my opinion, are really cool. So let me first explain this one in here. And if you recognize the logo, this is an app called Mini Meters, which allows you to have different meters while you are working on FL Studio. For me, I like to have only the waveform view and the LAUFS meter. And the last function that I add is basically to solo the low, the mid or the high frequencies of the track. So here on FL Studio, let me show you what all of these keys are doing for me. If I want to add a space in the middle of this loop, I just have to select where I want to add the space and press the button. And here I have the space. Now if I select a single sample and I press the zoom button, it's going to automatically zoom into this sample. And if I want to do a zoom out, I just press the zoom out button and I have it all the way back. Now for the mini meters, if I press the multi action for mini meters, look what happened. It opens the mini meter application here on the bottom and rearrange the playlist view and also rearrange my two meters here on the right. And now if I press the multi action button to close mini meter, look what happened. It rearranged the playlist view and also my meters to fit the whole screen. Pretty cool, right? And the last function that I add on my master tool channel, the plugin that I use to make all of these actions work is a Fab Filter Pro MB. So if I click on it, you can see that I create three different bands, one for the lows, one for the mids and another for the highs. And if I click on each band, basically the compressor is off in all of them. So it's not taking almost any resources from my CPU. Okay, so now if I press the button to enable or disable from FL Studio, you can see how activates or deactivates the plugin. But now, as you can see, the plugin is bypassed. So if I want to activate it, I just have to press the bypass button and activate the plugin, which basically I use it to avoid clicking on FL Studio. And now if I want to listen only to the low frequencies, I just have to activate the low frequencies. If I want to listen only to the mids, I can activate only the mid frequencies. And if I want to listen only to the highs, I just have to press the high pass filter. And I can also bypass the mid frequencies if I activate low and high frequencies. I can also bypass the high frequencies if I activate the solo on the low and on the mid. So as you can see, this configuration is very helpful to check out your mixes. So now let me go back to Stream Deck software and let me explain you how to program the minimeters function. Here on the Stream Deck software, if I go to this profile, you can see that I have three different options. The first one, as you can see, it contains six different actions. So let's have a closer look. The first action, it opens a file which contains an, a specific preset for my master chain. The next one is a hotkey, basically enter. The next action opens the app Minimeters. Then I have a delay of a thousand milliseconds and then opens FL Studio. And the last action is to switch the profile from a Minimeters to my FL Studio for Stream Deck. The next key, I use it basically to close a Minimeters. So let's have a look to these four actions. The first one, again, open an a specific preset for my master chain. The next one is a hotkey which press enter. The third action is to close mini meter and the last action is to go back to my FL Studio profile on Stream Deck. And the last key that I have is simply to open mini meters. The reason why I have this one is because when I close FL Studio, the next time that I open, it always reopens FL Studio with the last layout that I had. So if I close FL Studio while I'm using mini meters, next time that I open FL Studio, I'm going to have this gap on the bottom, which is the space dedicated for the mini meter. But if I press this button rather than this one, it's gonna mess up all of the layout. And now let me go back to FL Studio and explain you in detail the reason of some of these actions. Okay, so here in the FL Studio, the first thing that I want to explain is the reason of the common key Enter. Look what happened if I press Enter. It changed the playlist view to maximize or to restore. So again, if I press Enter, it's going to maximize the window. It happened exactly the same with the mixer. So if I open the mixer and I press Enter, it's going to maximize the mixer window. And if I press Enter again, it's going to restore the mixer view. So the first trick to get this command work is to always do it without the mixer on window. So you must have only the playlist window. 
Now, the way how to set up the meters on Wave Candy is a little bit more complicated. So if I go to the master and I open my meters here on Wave Candy, there is no way to automate the arrangement of these views. So basically, I create another preset. If I go to the presets in here, you can see a two different presets, a Tools Blue and Tools Blue Double M, which means mini meters. So if I choose to the Tools Blue mini meters, the arrangement change. And if I go back to the normal Tools Blue, Blue is going to open it and this different arrangement. Now, the way to make it work with a stream deck, basically, I had to create a whole preset for my all master chain. In order to save the whole channel as a preset, I just have to go to the master channel, right click on it, go to file and here on top, save mixer track state. I'm going to click on it and now you name it as you want. In my case, I name it zero and two. Zero is with the layout without the millimeters and the number two is for the layout out with the millimeters. And now let's go back to Stream Deck software to have a look again to all of these actions. Back on Stream Deck software, let's have a look to the multi-action of opening millimeters. The first action is to open my master tool preset with the layout for a millimeters. The next action is a hotkey pressing enter just to make a space on the playlist. The third action is to open the millimeters app and the next two actions are a delay and open FL Studio. The reason of these two actions is because when you open millimeters, your system is going to focus on the millimeters view. So with these two actions, I'm forcing the system to focus on FL Studio rather than millimeters. And the last action is just to switch the profile from millimeters to FL Studio profile on Stream Deck. And now let's have a look to the multi action of closing millimeters. This one is a bit more simple. So again, the first action is to open my master tool preset for the layout that I want to use when I'm not using a millimeters. The next action is a hotkey enter to maximize the playlist view. The third action is to close the app millimeter. And the last action is to switch the profile from millimeters to FL Studio profile on Stream Deck. So that's the way of programming these incredible actions. Okay, and now let's have a look to some of these actions in real life while using FL Studio. Okay, that's all for me. Hope you like learn something from this video. If you have any question, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. My name is John Hutt.